Welcome to this video where I show how to model a pump bag feature within ResSim. Uh, in most cases, this type of feature will be modeled when you have a hydropower plant on an upstream reservoir and you generate power during periods of high power demand it, and either all or a part of that hydropower release is then captured by the downstream reservoir and then during uh, periods when the power demand is lower that water then gets pumped back up to the upstream reservoir and then it can be used for generating power during the next uh, period of high power demand which will either be the next day or at least sometime in the future. So let's take a look at how this is modeled in ResSim. So we're going to take a look at the upstream reservoir first. So at the upstream reservoir, this is the physical data of the upstream reservoir that we're looking at. Um, I did put in a controlled outlet. In most cases, you'll have a, uh, if you're modeling that situation, then you're going to have a power plant here. But I do show how to model power plants in other videos. Uh, so uh, to simplify this, I just put in a controlled outlet um, for this p particular example. Uh, but the, uh, the uh, outlet that we're most concerned with for this example is the pump. So here you can see that I have modeled the pump and the way you get the pump in there is you just right click on um, the dam and then you just tell it to add a pump. So that's how I got that in there. Now for this particular example the number of pumps is one. Now I have a minimum tailwater elevation of 10. Now my tailwater is going to be that downstream reservoir so if that downstream reservoir gets below 10 then no pumping is able to occur because it has too low of a tailwater elevation the maximum head differential is going to be uh, 100. So if the difference between the upstream reservoir or the level of water in the upstream reservoir and the level of water in the downstream reservoir is greater than 100, then again, no pumping will occur. I gave my pump capacity a constant value. It can be a function of the operating head, but for simplicity, I just gave it a constant value of 20 CFS for this case. You do need to specify a tailwater elevation for a pump, or at least some kind of tailwater condition. You can use a constant elevation. You could use a rating curve, but since I am uh, pumping out of the re-reg reservoir, I just use that as my downstream control. We can go look at our operations. Now, for this, I have uh, just one rule and the rule is in the conservation zone and I named this rule reservoir pump back. Um, I didn't put a pump back rule in the flood zone because I assume that if the main reservoir is in the flood zone that you won't be uh, doing any pump back. That doesn't mean you can't do that but for this case I just assume that there would be no pump back unless you're trying to refill the conservation pool. So to get this rule I go to rule new And I'll just give it uh, a name. I'm not going to actually put the rule in because it's already in the model. Um, but remember, you can apply rules to the reservoir, to individual outlets. In this case, I'll apply it to the pump. And when I do apply it to a pump, I only have one rule, and it's the pump schedule. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I already have that rule developed. So there's uh, several different parameters that you need to put in for this. Um, one is the target fill elevation. Now I just use the uh, storage zone. You can use constant or it can vary by season, but I just use the storage zone and said that once my conservation zone is full for the main reservoir, then that's my target elevation. Um, there's a pumping strategy and basically for the pumping strategy that says that now this model is going to be running on a one hour time step and I'll get to this pumping period in, in a second, but we have a four hour pumping period. If it doesn't need to use all four hours, then um, you can tell it to just use the entire pump period. So just pump enough, uh, or just pump just what you need for each hour for four hours to be full at the end of the period. So that's if you use the entire pump period. If you use the full pump capacity, then it'll just um, max out you know what it it can pump in order to fill the uh, um, the storage zone in this case I'm using uh, the full pump capacity 
my source reservoir is going to be the re-reg reservoir, which is that downstream reservoir. There is a minimum uh, pumping. Basically, it says that if the pumping isn't required, you can still put in a minimum. I'm not going to go into that too much um, other than to say I just used a no required minimum. Here's the daily pumping period. Um, in this case, I do use a fixed hour range. And again, it's from 2200 hours, which is at uh, 10 o'clock at night to 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I do keep it constant throughout the entire year. So if you specify something on 01 January and you don't change it at any other point throughout the year, it means that it's good for the entire year. And that, that's what I chose for this. Now, for your pumping period, you can use between sunrise and sunset. And there is um, a bunch of parameters that you put in. Um, if that's something that you want to choose, then um, and that works for your situation, then that's fine. Uh, but for this example, we're just going to use the fixed hour range. Uh, the final thing is the pumping bias. Um, and basically, I, um, my understanding of pumping bias is that if you use your full pump capacity, but you don't need the entire pumping period to get uh, to your target fill elevation, then you can specify whether or not you want it to pump at the beginning, the middle, or the end of the period. So for instance, if I just need two hours, then it would go from 10 to midnight if I specify beginning of period. Um, it would be 11 to 1, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. if I did middle of period, and then midnight to 2 a.m. if I needed, if I uh, chose end of period. And that's if I needed only two of the four hours to get it full using the full pump capacity. We can go in also and look at the re-reg reservoir. Um, I don't think I made any changes there. Um, and for my re-reg reservoir, I just basically just put in one controlled outlet. You know, you can put in a controlled outlet, uncontrolled outlet, whatever happens to be the case for your downstream reservoir. And you can see it's a very simple case where there basically are no rules. Um, I, I just wanted to pass whatever's coming in if the re-reg gets full. Uh, but it really is there for storing water to be able to pump it back up to the uh, to the main reservoir. So I think that that shows all of the parameters that I wanted to show. We can compute this. Looks like it computes successfully. And we can then go ahead and plot this. And in this case, we can see that um, uh, so a couple of things to point out. Number one is that the vertical dash line is uh, the end of the look back period um, and the beginning of the simulation period. And um, so you can see that as soon as the simulation period starts, I, by the way, I have very little inflow coming into this main reservoir. And um, I did that purposely because I wanted to make sure that, you know, we could actually see the results and see the behavior of this. Um, and so since I am in the conservation zone, I'm starting at 55, and my top of conservation was 75. So since I'm starting in the conservation zone, it wants to hold on to all of the inflow that it possibly can. So you can see that here, my, both my inflow and outflow, well, my inflow is very close to zero, and my outflow is actually zero. Um, but you can see that during the periods where I don't have pump back occurring from that downstream reservoir, the reservoir level is basically flat, which is what you would expect because inflow is just about equal to outflow. But it's during these periods from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. that I'm starting to get these rises, and that's causing a rising pool elevation. And you would expect just the opposite at the re-rag. So if we plot the re-rag, Here you can see, and sometimes you'll notice you might get a little bit of instability at the first time step or the first couple of time steps when it transitions over from the look back to the simulation period. And, and um, you know, you could play around with the model to get rid of that if it's important. Um, in this case, I don't think that is too big of a deal, so we'll just leave it as is. And um, again, I, since I'm not getting any outflow coming from that upstream reservoir, um, and um, I, I have a decreasing pool elevation, um, 
you can see I'm not getting any inflow coming into this reservoir and I'm not really having any outflow going out of this reservoir. So by the way, the inflow is the dark line and the outflow is the green line. So you can see once it gets past this instability, those two are coincident. And so then again, in between the times when pumping is occurring, the reservoir is flat. Um, but I have a decreasing reservoir, uh, a decreasing pool elevation because during the hours from 10 to 2, I'm actually pumping to that upstream reservoir. So as we would expect, it's just the opposite of what we saw at the upstream reservoir. So at the upstream reservoir, between the hours of 10 and 2, you saw a rise in pool elevation. And between 10 and 2 for this downstream reservoir, you're seeing a drop in pool elevation. So again, it just isn't. Um, a very realistic example of you know what you would see you know in a system where you are actively generating hydropower every day and um, and then pumping it back during the overnight hours or during any hours where you have a low power demand but it actually is a good example to show the behavior of the pump back feature within ResSim. So um, I hope that you found this to be helpful. Um, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel um, if you want to know when other videos come out. And thanks for watching this one.